Classmates, today we are going to introduce the role of routers in a network. Routers have a similar structure to our personal computers consisting of hardware and software systems. First, let's take a look at the hardware components of a router. Routers are intelligent electronic devices and their hardware includes 1. Central Processing Unit CPU 2. Read-only memory ROM 3. Random Access Memory RAM 4. Flash Memory Flash 5. Non-Volatile Random Access Memory NVIN 6. Console Port 7. Auxiliary Port 8. Interfaces and 9. Cables the router's software system mainly includes Router Operating System, Network Interoperating System iOS Configuration Files, divided into Startup Configuration File and Running Configuration File Utility Management Programs Note, usually, the software systems of routers from different companies are different. For example, in the picture, it shows the operating system of Cisco, which is called iOS, and its command line interface is referred to as CLI. Let's take a look at a data transmission diagram. Entity A is transmitting data to Entity B, and the router is responsible for handling tasks at the physical layer, data link layer, and network layer. The main functions of the router include the following aspects. Connecting multiple independent networks or subnets. Interconnecting networks and finding the best path for data packet transmission. Traffic management including packet filtering, load splitting and load balancing. Redundancy and fault tolerance. Data compression and encryption. Next, let's understand the classification of routers. Since the emergence of routers, their technology has continuously improved. Today, more intelligent routers are emerging. According to different classification methods, routers can be roughly classified as follows. Based on the implementation of router functions, they can be divided into software routers, and hardware routers. Based on whether the functions are modular, they can be classified as modular structure routers and fixed configuration routers. Based on the applicable network environment, they can be divided into carrier grade routers, enterprise grade routers, and home routers. Based on the network level they are used in, they can be classified as core routers, aggregation routers, and access routers. The topology in the diagram divides the routers in the network into core routers, aggregation routers, and access routers. Now, let's understand the basic working principles of routers. Firstly, routers have several basic requirements have two or more interfaces, implement protocols at least up to the network layer, support at least two different subnet protocols, heterogeneous networks, have a set of routing protocols. Routers are based on hardware and are coordinated by the router operating system. They use routing protocols, in other words, routing selection algorithms, to accomplish IP routing. The following diagram provides a brief overview of the router's working process, which will not be further explained due to time constraints. Next, we will learn about the principles of router forwarding. 1. First, check if there is a matching host route. If there is no host route, perform a subnet route lookup according to the following rules. First, perform a bitwise and operation between the destination IP and the subnet mask to obtain the subnet address. B. 
Then, use this subnet address to look up all matching routes in the routing table. C. Apply the longest prefix match rule to find the best route among these routes. 3. Finally, match the default gateway. Thirdly, let's introduce the sources of routes. Directly connected routes discovered by the link layer protocols. Their characteristics are low cost, simple configuration, and no manual maintenance required. The drawback is that they can only discover routes within the same interface subnet. Manually configured static routes. Their characteristics are no system overhead, simple configuration, but they require manual maintenance. They are suitable for networks with simple topology. Dynamically discovered routes by dynamic routing protocols. Their characteristics are high system overhead, complex configuration, but no manual maintenance required. They are suitable for networks with complex topology. Routes can be further divided into static routing protocols and dynamic routing protocols. The characteristics of static routing protocols are that network administrators manually configure fixed routing information in routers. And these routes do not change unless there is human intervention. Static routing is generally used in small-scale networks with a fixed topology. The advantages of static routing are simplicity, efficiency, reliability, and it has the highest priority. When there is a conflict between dynamic and static routes, static routes take precedence. However, the downside is that configuring static routes can be cumbersome and they cannot adapt to changes in the network environment. Dynamic routing involves routers in the network running dynamic routing protocols to communicate with each other, exchange routing information, and update their routing tables accordingly. It is suitable for large networks with frequently changing topologies. The advantages of dynamic routing are its simplicity in configuration and its ability to adapt to real-time changes in the network structure. However, the downside is that different dynamic routing protocols may consume network bandwidth and router resources to varying degrees. Now, please complete the following assignments. The above is the content of our class today. Everyone, please review the material carefully after class. In the next class, we will introduce routing protocols. See you in the next class.